Over the past year or so, I've done quite a bit of content on home servers and networking, building your own free NAS box, service tutorials, and a bit of high-speed networking. But what if you're someone who doesn't want to go through the hassle of building an entire server closet just to run Plex or keep backups of your home computers? Well, this compact little NAS box might be exactly what you're looking for. Welcome back to Craft Computing, everyone. As always, I'm Jeff, and this is the TerraMaster F2221. It's a small two-bay network-attached storage server that they're touting for use in home or small business settings. But what is the advantage of running a NAS box like this at your house? Home NAS boxes like this are a little bit more than just storage you can share across multiple PCs. The 221 is in fact a full-fledged computer, running an Intel Celeron J3355 and two gigabytes of RAM. While that may not sound like a lot, it's actually capable of running a whole host of useful services to take advantage of on your home network. For example, you can use this to back up all the PCs in your house, install Plex Media Server with its own dedicated storage, install Docker and run any network applications you'd like, use this as a home web server for building and hosting your own website. All of these are possible with a very simple point and click installation and configuration. But first things first, the 221 is a great looking machine and surprisingly compact. I could very easily see this sitting next to a home router without adding too much additional clutter. Taking a walk around the NAS, it's reasonably well constructed with an aluminum center housing and plastic bezels on the front and rear. There are two three and a half inch hard drive trays on front alongside the LED status lights and a single power button. Around the backside, we've got a 90 millimeter fan taking up most of the rear section. Tucked away to the right of that is an HDMI port, two USB 3.0 ports, two gigabit ethernet ports, and a 12 volt power input. One major criticism I've had of a number of these NAS in a box type solutions is their use of proprietary components, especially when it comes to power supplies. I was pleasantly surprised to find out that this unit only requires a standard 12 volt transformer with a barrel plug, not some magic first party only power supply that you'll never ever be able to find a replacement for. Included in the box is pretty much everything you need to get started, minus whatever hard drives you decide to install. There's a 12 volt power brick, network cable, quick start guides, and even a screwdriver inside. Installing the drives is as easy as can be. Just remove the two trays, place the drives face down on a table, and screw the tray into them using the included screws. Getting everything set up and ready to run was an absolute breeze. Plug in ethernet and power to the NAS and press the power button on the front. While it's booting up, get on a computer and go to start.terramaster.com and walk through their dead simple setup tutorial. There's a TNAS management application for both Windows and Mac that will automatically find your NAS on the network and help you with the setup process. There's also a mobile app if that's more your speed. Inside the TNAS app, right click on your server and select login. Your first time logging into the NAS through a web browser, it will have you set up a password and select a time zone. You'll then be greeted by a very sharp looking main menu screen that functions more like a Windows desktop instead of a web-based application. It really helps the TerraMaster stand out as a very polished product that anyone can use, which unfortunately isn't the case with a majority of home NASs on the market today. The first thing you see when you log in is actually a pop-up window that links to a bunch of tutorials to teach you all about the TerraMaster NAS. And I highly recommend following those links, whether you're a newbie or a seasoned veteran. It really does give a very intuitive and well-written roundup of what you can do with the TerraMaster and how to set things up. In the bottom right of the screen, you'll find a pop-up window with general health and status information about your NAS. Things like drive space availability, CPU and memory utilization, and network activity. And speaking of network, the next step I would recommend is setting up a static IP address for your NAS. I've already gone ahead and done that and set up my internet gateway to run through my VPN. You didn't really think I'd expose my public IP address like that, did you? If all you want to use the NAS for is to share files across more than one computer, you can likely stop here, as SMB, AFP, NTP, and FTP are all enabled by default, and the admin user you configured has read-write access to every folder. From a security standpoint, I would have preferred TerraMaster ask what devices I'll be accessing the NAS with and possibly set up separate user accounts for file access. But that's a pretty minor complaint and something you can do on your own with their very intuitive menu system. But as I mentioned at the top of this video, file sharing is definitely not the TerraMaster's only trick. Opening up the applications menu displays a whole host of services you can run on the 221 with just a couple of clicks. There's everything from MySQL Server for database applications and Mantis BT for software bug tracking. There's rsync and Dropbox both for cloud file sync applications, and Plex Media Server and iTunes Streaming Server for all of your media library needs. And as I mentioned before, Docker is also an installable application, allowing you to install any prepackaged services that you'd like. Performance-wise, file transfers were speedy enough, I would say. I tested in RAID 0 using a pair of HGST 6TB Enterprise Helium drives, the same drives that I use in my FreeNAS server. 
Sending files over to the 221, I saw moments of maxing out that gigabit connection, but sustained writes were closer to around 95 megabytes per second. Copying files from the NAS back to my workstation maxed out the gigabit connection at 112 megabytes per second every single time. So if you're worried about the hardware being a bit underpowered to work even as a file server, rest assured it handles file transfers just fine. So what's there to like about the TerraMaster F2221? If you're wanting to run a home or small business NAS to run backups, share files, sync with online storage, or even stream media from, this is an excellent compact package. The 90 mm fan on the rear is whisper quiet. However, the drives clicking away in there do echo and reverberate something fierce, making it a little less than desk friendly in my opinion. If this were sitting across the room though, that would not be an issue. This thing also sips on power, idling at just 18 watts with both hard drive spinning or five watts if you enable sleep mode for them. It also only reached 42 watts under full load. So it's a home server that's not going to break your bank electrically speaking if you wanna keep it running 24 seven. As for negatives, while the materials used are sturdy enough, they're also lacking a bit on fit and finish. The seams between the front and rear bezels don't quite line up with the aluminum chassis, and the drive cage latches feel firm, but in a possibly brittle and will break someday kind of way. Also, with only two cores and two threads, I can't imagine having more than two users accessing this simultaneously without some significant slowdown issues. Overall, I'm a big fan of the TerraMaster F2221. It's lightweight, compact, speedy, and the installation and GUI are honestly the best I have ever seen out of any home-based NAS product. And with plenty of applications to install, what you can run on this is pretty much up to your imagination, so long as your Celeron CPU is up to the task. And at only $249 for the chassis, it is plenty affordable. In fact, I picked up the two six terabyte drives in here for $109 each, giving me 12 terabytes of RAID 0 storage and a NAS server for just $468. And if two bays isn't quite enough for you, they also offer a four bay for just $50 more. Personally, I'm planning on using this as a backup and cloud sync appliance, but what would you use the TerraMaster F2221 for? Let me know down in the comments below. If you're interested in picking up the TerraMaster F2221 or any other TerraMaster appliance, I will have affiliate links down in the video description below. And if you do plan on picking one up, make sure to use those because it doesn't cost you a thing and it really does help me keep the lights on around here. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to Craft Computing since, well, you're already down there. Also join the community over on Discord by joining the Patreon. It's a minimum donation of $1 and gets you access to the exclusive server where you can chat with myself and the other hosts from Talking Heads throughout the week. As always, thank you guys so much for watching this one, and I will see you in the next video. Cheers, guys. Today's beer, I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce because, well, I just embarrassed myself, and I know there are some native German speakers who watch this channel. So instead, I'm just going to say it's a Bavarian-style lager. Uh, unfortunately, I can't say a whole lot about it. Uh, it doesn't even list an ABV on here. So uh, I will say a, uh, I believe my mother-in-law uh, found this somewhere and picked it up. So eh, figured I'd give it a shot. It smells like a pretty decent lager. A uh, little bit more of a sweeter nose to it. Uh, almost like a honey kind of smell to it. It's interesting. Very light bodied, very smooth. Uh, definitely not a high ABV beer. I'm gonna guess this is somewhere around four and a half percent if I had to guess. Uh, very light, very drinkable. Honestly, if this is what Budweiser or Coors or any of the, uh, the domestic tastes is like, I drink this all the time. This drinks like lemonade, but doesn't leave that weird ricey aftertaste in your mouth. Well, doesn't taste like corn syrup either. Very smooth beer. I am liking this. Uh, the honey, I think I mistaked honey for clove. Uh, this definitely has a little bit of clove in it. Obviously it is a Bavarian inspired beer, which kind of makes sense. Uh, but it's not the clove I'm used to smelling in like a Weiss beer or a, a Hefeweizen. It's uh, a little bit unique. 